the the creeps they're they've been named that by the jerks but the creeps insist that evolution creeps along in a smooth gradual process over vast periods of time that that's essentially what uh, darwin said whereas the jerks so dubbed by the creeps they maintain that evolution makes sudden catastrophic leaps and overall i agree with the jerks uh, but but the question i have is is what what causes those leaps? So, I mean, I, I see the leaps, but what causes them? In my opinion, the, the jerks have never presented a credible mechanism to explain what causes the sudden changes. And I'm hoping tonight that I can, can shed some, at least some light on that. But I think that geomagnetic reversals triggered those evolutionary leaps. All right, now, and, why? And think, what effect would a magnetic reversal have on the... Um, spawning, if you will, of a new species. W what effect would magnetic reversal have on that? Well, let me tell you a couple of things that, that I hope we can get to before before I totally answer that. But uh, w a couple of things that are also spawned by magnetic reversals that I see is is that oil, petroleum, carbon rains from the sky at these times in a predictable cycle. Uh, because I, I see these magnetic reversals occurring in a predictable natural cycle, and, and I believe that the next beat of that cycle is due. Uh, but another, if you have anybody who lives near a Carolina Bay, I don't even know whether you've heard of a Carolina Bay, but the, the Carolina Bays are swamp-type areas mainly found in the southeastern United States, but they're uh, they've been found in, in Georgia, in the North Carolina, South Carolina, Delaware, as far as uh, far west as Texas. These scientists or, or people used to think that, that that's all they were was just swamps. But all of them range, they're, they're shallow, they only range from about 20 feet to 50 feet deep. And it turns out once the airplane was invented so people could fly over these things, they realized that these Carolina Bays are all, every single one of them is elliptical, and some of them overlap each other. And these things are big. They can range from a few acres big to bigger than a city. More than 2 million of these bays were blasted into the ground. They, they're, they are swamps now. But 30, about 12,500 years ago, about the time of the last magnetic reversal, something blasted more than 2 million of these holes into the ground across the United States. And you can go onto Google Earth and you can see them for yourself. This is not something I'm making up. You can see them for yourself. It's amazing. And I had, until I started researching for this book, I hadn't even heard of Carolina Bays. So... So we'll get there, too, hopefully. But anyway, now what I see, as we head into a magnetic reversal, our magnetic field strength weakens, which it is doing right now uh, quite spectacularly. But as our magnetic field weakens, our magnetic field strength, our magnetic field protects us from cosmic rays. And as our magnetic field strength declines, Cosmic rays are able to, more and more of them are able to bombard the Earth. And during a magnetic reversal, for a short time, we apparently lose almost all of our magnetic field strength. At that point, cosmic rays, I mean, they do contain radioactive material. So at that point, I see the, the Earth being bathed in radioactivity, which would lead to mutations and to evolutionary leaps, not gradual changes, but huge catastrophic changes. I would think that probably most animals, newly created animals, die, but some of them are able to adapt and, and live. And I think eventually, you know, there's, it's still a new field, but I think eventually we'll be able to place almost all major species changes near a magnetic reversal. Our um, magnetic field has been losing its strength, as you said, quite dramatically. Over the yep. past 2,000 years, our magnetic field has lost two-thirds of its strength. Yes. 
and it's declining even more rapidly now. Yes, it is. The, the rate of decline has picked up. In the, in the last 100 years, the, our magnetic field strength has declined by 5%. So it, the rate of decline is picking up. Some scientists say we're 5,000 years from another magnetic reversal. Uh, some scientists say it would take 500 years for it to occur. But other scientists say that a magnetic reversal could occur in as few as 30 days. And I'm I'm with the ones that say 30 days. Why? Well, the, the reason for that is that there was a study done, uh, and I can't remember the names of all the scientists now, Prevost, I think, and Cox, but, but um, scientists were making a study of lava flows on Steens Mountain in south-central Oregon. And, and one of the ways they can tell there had been a magnetic reversal is that lava, when it pours out of the ground, is non-magnetic because it's so hot. But as it cures, as it, as it cools down what's called the Curie temperature, it takes on the magnetic field of the day. So, you know, it points whatever way the magnetic field is pointing. Well, these scientists drilled cores into the lava field at Steens Mountain, and they drilled some cores at the edge of the lava flow, and then they drilled some cores at the center of the lava flow. And I'm simplifying, but what they do is they drill a core, put their, their compass down there, and see which way it points. They discovered that the compass on the edge of the lava flow pointed in a different direction than the compass at the center of the lava flow, which means that the magnetic field reversed during the difference in time that it took for those two areas to cool. So it's possible that that, may, that, that magnetic reversal could have occurred in as little as 30 days, now based on that. All right. Let's say that we get up in the morning and discover that a magnetic reversal is underway. It's happening. How long is that going to take? I mean, 6 o'clock in the morning we find out it just started. How long does it take? By 6 in the evening is it going to be reversed? No, I don't think it would be that fast. Now, you know, right now the north magnetic pole is moving. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether that's a part of it, uh, whether that's a part of what I'm talking about or if that's just a normal fluctuation, but it is moving right now toward toward uh, Russia. Yep. Um, I can't answer how long that takes. As I said, some scientists would say it'll take 5,000 years. I'm going to guess 30 days. What can we expect to see? How would we know? I mean, would it just be that our compasses wouldn't be working right, or would we see any sort of cataclysmic things happening around us as evidence of the magnetic reversal? One of the things I expect is, you know, and I talk about these, uh, uh, these Carolina bays, I expect huge explosions in the sky. Now, uh, the science is changing very rapidly. I came out with this, this book a year ago and, and where I was saying that you know, talking about these explosions in the sky, much like Tunguska from, from uh, what was it, 1908, but of expecting explosions in the sky, because, because right now, it, within the last few months, and this is even since the book came out, um, scientists have, have discovered they've got a, a new, um, uh, they've, they've got three satellites now that, that can triangulate and look at the aurora borealis, and they have discovered huge explosions occurring in the sky up at the edge of our magnetosphere. Well, as our magnetic field strength declines, that edge of the magnetosphere, or, or magnetosphere, some people say, but the edge of that will be moving closer and closer and closer to Earth itself. And so I think those explosions that now occur 600 miles up will be occurring closer and closer to us. I, I think it's going to be a, a very scary time for everybody, for every animal, for everybody. There are a lot of folks that listen to this show who are very much tuned in to the year 2012, and they believe that uh, tremendous cataclysms are going